Well, your job probably has a time of year that's more hectic than any other season, right? Well, the team at Paws Wildlife Center in the middle of their busiest time of year, which they call baby season. I talked to Dr. Nikki Rosenhagen about a few of their newest patients. Take a look. Starting in about April, um, the Paws Wildlife Center and, and all wildlife centers start to get an influx of um, injured orphan sick baby, um, baby animals, right? And this is because it's, it's breeding season and so we've got a lot of babies out and about. And also because people are out enjoying the nice weather. Yeah, so why don't you take us through who you are taking care of right now? We have a couple hundred animals right now in care and they're ranging, we've got hummingbirds to eagles, uh, seals, bears, bobcats, so anything you can think um, that's native to this area, native wild animals, we probably have in care. Right now, um, in particular, I know that the particular interest is that we have two um, orphaned harbor seal pups um, and we have two um, black bear siblings um, who have been with us for several months now. When they came in, their eyes were closed. They looked like little newborn pups. Um, and, and the reason that we suit up is because when they're really young, especially once their eyes open, they never had a chance to see mom, right? They're so little that they didn't get to see her and so they don't know what a bear looks like. And so it's very important that they learn that humans are not a source of food. I mean, how do these animals typically even become orphaned? What are the circumstances typically? It, you know, it, it ranges. So in, in some cases, like in the case of um, deer fawns and cottontail babies, little bunnies, um, sometimes those animals are picked up inadvertently um, when they're not truly orphaned. Mom uh, will leave those animals for long periods of time and that's totally natural. And when people find them alone, they assume that they're orphaned and they're not. So in some cases, it's an accidental case. Um, in a lot of cases, it's because something happened to mom or dad, whether they were hit by a vehicle or they got sick or flew into a window or attacked by a cat. Um, and sometimes it's natural, you know, sometimes there's a storm that blows the nest of baby squirrels out of a tree. What about the bear cubs that you have now? How did they end up in your care? So they actually were in a den with their mom and there was an accidental den disturbance. Mom ran off and they tried to reunite the cubs and she didn't come back. Um, and that was totally an accident, but um, there was no way to get them back to mom and they were certainly too young to survive on their own, so. Yeah, and what about the Harbor Seal Pup? There's an organization called Seal Sitters and they spend time watching the beaches and keeping track of any seals that look like they might be sick or injured or orphaned. If they determine that it is indeed in need of care, whether it's an orphaned or injured or sick, then they will reach out to us to see if we have the ability to take care of them. Um, and if so, they're the ones that bring them in. So that's something that members of the public do not and should not interfere with. Yeah, I was going to ask you this. Are there some things that we do thinking we're doing the right thing and we're not doing the right thing that maybe you could give us some advice on? And so what I would say is certainly if they're injured, um, then they probably need care. But otherwise, give us a call and let us know because mother, rabbit, deer, Robin, they always do a better job of raising these babies than we do, despite our best efforts. And so the best thing that we can do is, is give them a chance to be raised with their parents. Um, and then if they need to come to us, they can. What are the unique challenges to taking care of harbor seal pups? So harbor seal pups um, pose a lot of challenges. Often by the time they get to us, they're in, in pretty rough shape. Um, and so it can be a, a, take a little bit of time to get them stabilized. Um, getting them to learn to eat fish <laughs> is always a challenge. So we have to, we have to feed it to them. You know, we, we push it into their mouths. A lot of times they hate it at first. Um, and so that's a challenge is them learning, like, actually, I do like fish and this is okay. And then learning <laughs> to figure out how, you know, they swallow the fish head first. And so we always get ones that chew them in the middle, try and swallow them tail first. Um, and so it's a bit of a learning curve. It's like, it is like having a, a, a young child and teaching them. They make quite a mess in the pools. And so keeping them, it's a lot of water, which is honestly why they are one of the reasons they're so expensive is we're constantly cleaning their pools and direct dumping the pools and refilling them. And so it takes a lot of effort to provide good quality care to these guys. Why is it so important for you to return these animals back to the wild? These animals, that's their nature. I mean, I think if you put yourself in their shoes or their flippers, um, you would feel the same way that you want to go home. Um, they are, we do our best to minimize their stress and control their pain, but for them to be in captivity is a very scary experience. And the last thing we want to do is, is keep them there forever. Um, and so our, our, like I said, our first priority is to get them fixed, get them healthy, um, raise them up and get them back home. Yeah, they're doing great work.